Welcome back. We're almost at the end of our first and hopefully last virtual conference 2020. Hope you had um, time to sit down, rest and listen to all the talks that have been put together um, for you. In the In first talk this morning, we heard from Mother Adela the importance, the um, responsibility and the impact that Christian women have in society and the importance for us women to have Our Lady as a model, as a point of reference in all that we do. In, all in our second talk, Leila Mila reminds us of the role as parents, as primary educators, as the ones who can pass on the faith to their children. And, and I think what Leila is trying to do in that talk is also to boost a little bit of uh, confidence in this role that we, we have. And that the last talk, as well as Sarah's testimony, links in very nicely with the previous two talks. Well, you might say, what has the importance of um, small groups got to do with a domestic church? Or, you know, me being a parent and, you know, be me you know, being a woman or something like this. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We can't give to our children what we haven't got. We can't pass on the faith to our children if we don't have faith. We can't expect our children to pray if we don't pray. And we can't expect our children to know what the faith is about unless we know it ourselves. Life is busy. Um, no matter what stage of faith you are, you need the support of the Christian community. You need somewhere um, to get fed um, in order to feed your children. You need the support of other women in faith. You need the support of the Christian community and you need, you really need to um, get to know your faith better. I'm gonna briefly um, talk about my experience of a small group. Um, it was lovely to listen to um, Sarah's um, testimony. It's the first time I hear it. But I remember very clearly when um, Sarah came along and um, suggested the possibility of perhaps starting some sort of group yeah, youth group, a prayer group. Um, you could tell that she was really desperate, not desperate, but really she had the need and she was looking for something. And to be honest, you know, I wasn't very keen in starting anything. First of all, because um, um, this kind of thing never works. There's never interest. Um, that's what I thought. And um, I felt I didn't need it. But nevertheless, I felt the urge of starting something. And I, I had the push from Sarah, from, you know, whoever, from God, from the Holy Spirit. Well, she, the Holy Spirit certainly suggested to Sarah. God, you know, probably kind of, you know, pushed me like uh, as he always does um, to do something that I thought I couldn't do. And, um, and we've been walking together now for three and a half years, and I'm so grateful um, for this little group of ours. Well, I invite you strongly to um, look for a local group, to join your local group if there's one. If there isn't one, just start one. Well, you could, um, you know, there are many studies out there. You might want to um, study scripture and therefore have a group days um, scripture, a scripture base. You might want to get to know the teaching of the church a bit better. And Dao is really wonderful um, for that. Or, you know, for scripture, perhaps Walking With Purpose as wonderful books where you can like dive into scripture more and more and literally um, get to know yourself better and Christ better in the scripture. Or you could start with one of those lovely um, books like Divine Mercy for Mums or The Friendship Projects. Uh, I think we started with Divine Mercy for Mums and I thought it was the perfect um, starting point for our group because it was a very gentle introduction on um, really the basics of Christianity. And after three and a half years, we are now into um, St. Thomas of Aquinas. We've, uh, we've done all sorts and uh, one of our recent study has been um, uh, Humane Vitae. But um, saying that, sorry, going back to my experience, I mean, I remember, so you have this... Um, um, this desire to start a group perhaps you know um, somebody is kind of pushing you to do it or encouraging you rather rather to do it and the first thing that happens and will happen to you well I don't feel I can 
because, and you know, you will find many excuses not to do it. One uh, being, I feel inadequate. In my case, well, the language has always been a barrier. Um, pride, that's me also. Um, perfection, I'm a perfectionist. All, you know, things that kind of, you know, can stop you from doing anything really. And then you say, well, then you say, well, but um, maybe I, 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 I can't because I'm, I'm really, I'm shy. Or I can't because, you know, I don't know that much about my faith, but I want to start one. Well, start one. There are many studies out there. You don't have to come up with the, the teaching of the church. The teaching of the church is there. So, you know, choose the right study for you and just go for it. Because you will be given the graces that you need to lead your group. And not so much lead it, but literally to facilitate um, the gathering for it. Okay, if you think that and you've been thinking about, you know, um, starting a group, just, um, as I say, just do it. And you might um, want to start it in your parish. So speak to your local parish priest. Um, try to um, you know, try book a date. Um, like ad advertise it um, a couple of months before starting. Um, be available. Speak to people. Invite people. Um, and um, and if not, if your parish priest is not interested, if you have a, like a, the the right facilities, if you have you know a big house, if you have you know even a, a room where you can have people, you know, just invite them over and start the study at, her, at your house. Just lay, just make it as accessible to women as possible. And one thing that I wanted for my group is, uh, one, I wanted the children to be around. I didn't want mothers to feel that the fact that they had children would prevent them from learning more about their faith. Well, well, this is what we are, we're mothers first, but also, you know, we need to get fed. How can we combine the two? Well, we'll have, uh, you know, toys in the corner. We are not expecting our sessions to be perfect because there are, there's noise all around us and some sessions are more uh, productive than others. But nevertheless, you know, we share this, um, we, we're together in communion. We share the safe sufferings and joys of motherhood. And, um, and we're learning from one another and from, uh, um, and from you know, from scripture or from um, the church. And, and I remember, for example, in my case, when I was um, a younger mother, when I was a young mother with two or three children, um, two or three um, young children, th there was nothing out there for me because everything would exclude your children. So any Bible study, any, anything, anything of value didn't allow me to, um, in a sense, carry on being a mother. And that's why I thought that I wanted our groups to be you know, us, a bit messy, a bit noisy, and, uh, and us. So still being a mother, and while being a mother, while mothering our children, learning and loving our faith. So that was, um, that was you know, what's, what's uh, particular about our, our, um, our group. One of our typical sessions, in fact, we'll, we'll have uh, the children's corner with lots of toys and a big, um, large table with lots of lovely um, food and drinks. And while we eat and look after our children, we learn and we um, get closer to our Lord and to one another. So the first stage is, you know, you feel inadequate, you're scared, just go for it. God will give you the graces that you need to do what you have to do. The second stage is discomfort. So you start your group and uh, you've advertised it, you've done all that you could, but hey, only two or three people turn up. And you persist, you go ahead, you know, maybe the first month um, you know, goes along and you still have four or five people. Then you know, well, it's a mother's group, therefore the child is sick, the other child is not well, the mother is not well you end up with three people, including yourself. Well, yes, that will happen because, um, you know, it's a mother's group that you're creating. So enough said, you know, we are not, I mean, you know, don't depend on us. OK, but saying that persist, do not get discouraged. After six months, we had a core group of um, seven people. After a year, we were 12 and we've been 15 
you know, people come and go. And we are now an established group of 12 um, mothers, I think. Um, and people are very welcome. You know, every time we, um, we start a new study, we um, advertise it. We allow people to, new people um, to come in. And some people will come just for that study and then leave. But somehow you'll end up with a core number of people who have found something in the group and really can't do without it. So yeah, so second stage, you're discouraged. Just go ahead. It doesn't matter how many people turn up. Those are the people who need to be there. We've been together for three and a half years, so definitely more than six months. I'm getting more, more than I'm getting. I'm getting uh, from the group and from whatever we're doing and from the experience in itself more than I actually put in. And, um, and I literally, I can't do without it now. I miss my Thursday group very much. Can't wait to go back um, to seeing and meeting these women again. And that um, it is only possible again to give to our children if we receive. We can't give to our children what we don't have. If you have any question that you would like to um, ask one of our speakers um, or to us, you're very welcome to submit your questions and send it to catholicmothersuk at gmail.com. We will be able to answer your questions on Sunday before Mass. And uh, we now finish with, uh, with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow at four to answer some of your questions, if we receive any. If not, see you at six o'clock for live mass with Father Davidson. Have a good night and God bless.